Welcome to The Brave Place, where we journey into the lives of brave men and women who have beat the odds or who are in the trenches right now. Difference makers who have truly discovered the warrior that lives within and are living it out. This is the place that will inspire, encourage, enlighten, and challenge that brave person that lives deep down within all of us. Welcome back to The Brave Place. I'm your host, Christy Rodriguez, and I am here with my sweet, dear friend, Carrie Korn. Many of you know her from the KLRC Morning Show. She is the co-host, and Carrie is here today because we have an interesting uh, dynamic going on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Carrie, first of all, welcome to The Brave Place. I'm so excited. I'm a fan of The Brave Place, and I'm excited to be here with you. Oh, well, I am so excited to have you. This is a really unusual situation because, well, today we're going to be talking about seasons. Yes. Um, and we all enter seasons, good seasons, tough seasons, you know, trying times, beautiful times. If you're leaving a season, uh, you're going into a new season. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's really what's going on here for both of us. You are transitioning out of the morning show co-host position. And I am transitioning into the morning show co-host position for mm-hmm. KLRC. And uh, this is such a special transition because we are friends yeah. and you know that God is leading you into a new direction. Mm-hmm. And, and I know for me, God has been leading me into this direction. Right. And it's so cool how everything has just unfolded before us. And so I, I just want to want listeners Mm -hmm. Um, who know you because there are a lot of people who love you dearly. Um, And you've been speaking into their homes and their cars every morning for years. How many years now? 12 years. Oh, it's a long time. That is a long time. It's a lot of early mornings. (laughs) It is a lot of early mornings. And um, you've just really been such a blessing to Mm -hmm. so many people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of listeners. And it is such a gift to me to get to step into that role now. And and I want to do everything I can to bring glory to God in that position Mm -hmm. and, and also just do the best I can to, Mm -hmm. to bring you honor in that too. So, well, I'm excited about it too. It's kind of one of those bittersweet excitements. And I do think it's really ironic that this is happening around the same time that the presidential transaction is happening, (laughs) you know, cause it's like you and I are getting to have a peaceful transfer of power, right? That's exactly Exactly. right. This doesn't seem to happen. So maybe we can show them how it's done, right? (laughs) Hey, maybe they'll learn something from us. Uh, Well, it's been, it's been really interesting because this has been a long process for me. Mm. And I know it's, you know, kind of a, it seems sudden for the listeners. Um, but it's something that's been on my radar for a while now. Mm. And, you know, I've been praying this whole entire time, God, if it's my time to transition out of this season, then will you bring the right people? Mm. Will you bring the right person to KLRC to fill this role? And, and, uh, not to fill it the way that I did, because, you know, I feel like I gave everything that I had, Mm -hmm. um, during my time at KLRC, but, you know, really just praying God bring someone. And then when that someone was you, I was so excited because we are friends in Mm -hmm. real life Mm -hmm. and we know each other and we know each other's hearts and know, you know, I know that you care about Northwest Arkansas and mm-hmm. that you care about people. For sure. um, and so it's a lot of fun for me to be able to see how God answered that prayer in such a neat way. That was really surprising to me because I thought it was going to be, you know, someone I didn't know and that I'd get to learn to love her with the community. But I'm like, no, I already love Christy. So it's been great. Well, and, and that's what's so crazy for me, too, because I was just doing the podcast and doing my thing. And then the next thing you know, I sent a message to Mark and just say, hey, if you guys ever, you know, want someone that could do interviews or do something like that mm-hmm. um, on a greater scale for KLRC, let me know. And that was right after you had literally just a few yeah. days had told Mark and them that what your plans were. Exactly. Yeah. The timing was absolutely perfect. And it just felt like God had gone ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Well, and and that's what I want to talk about today because we do have new transitions in life. This is certainly a new transition for me, a new season in my life. Right now, I am a mom and I'm about to take on a a full-time job here Mm -hmm. at KLRC, an early morning job. It's going to be new and different. It is. And I am excited, but my schedule is definitely going to look different. No Mm -hmm. more staying up till midnight or one o'clock. 
you know, I'm gonna have to become an adult. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm gonna have to be that. mature now. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> I'm gonna have to grow up really quickly. Listen, I, my mom, when I got this job, she's like, maybe now you'll become a morning person. And it's been 12 years and I'm still not a morning person. <laughs> You're like, it's not happening. So hopefully, it, hopefully you can become a morning person. That's my prayer for you. I think it's, it's going to be an adjustment, but I'm looking forward to it. And I know that it's absolutely worth it. Um, so let's, let's dive in to you. I want listeners to hear parts of your story that they probably don't know about because you don't get to go here in the mornings due to the time restraints. Mm -hmm. And it's just really beautiful how God has moved in your life and and taking you on these different paths and seasons. And so first of all, right now you are transitioning out of this role into a counselor role. What inspired that? Yeah. Um, it's kind of one of those crazy moments. Um, I started going back to school in my early forties and when you're in your forties, you, you tell yourself this is too late in life to make a major life change, you Mm -hmm. know, but I was in this particular season of my life. When I decided to go back to college for the first time, I had just gone through a major transition. My husband and I had just divorced after 19 years of marriage. Wow. And so I found myself a single mom and my kids were teenagers. And so when kids get to be teenagers, they're not home as often and everything. And so I found myself having all of this alone time. And when you go through an unexpected divorce, you start looking at, did I make mistakes? Do I regret this? You know, Mm -hmm. should I have never married this man? All of these questions start kind of going through your head. And, and I was going to, and, you know, going to counseling every week just for myself to try to um, get through that season. And one of the things that came up through all of it is that I realized that I had no regrets whatsoever, except for one. And that was that I didn't go to college. Okay. You know, and my husband and I got married really young. It was a complicated marriage, but none of that I regretted because it made me the person that I was, Mm. you know, I have four beautiful children that I wouldn't have had it not been for my marriage. Right. Um, I learned so much about who I am as a person, who God is through my marriage. And so I didn't regret the marriage but I regretted not going to college. And I was like, wait a second, I can actually change this, Hmm. you know? So what had happened when I was a teenager, I was, I have always loved school. Like I love to learn just for no reason. I'm one of those people, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. um, when a teacher would assign a research project, I would get super excited. I'm like, yay. (laughs) Wow. I know. That's amazing. I know. Report card day was my favorite day because I knew I was going to have all A's on my report card. And it was just, It was my thing. You were the one that I would pay to do my papers. Exactly. I I was was that girl. I was proofreading (laughs) other kids' papers. When study groups were made, everybody was like, I want Carrie in my study group. So I was I was a total nerd in high school. Well, right before I graduated, I was about 16 years old. My parents went through a divorce and it was ugly. Things had not been good for a long time. But when the divorce happened, my mom moved. And, um, was far enough away that my brother and I didn't really see her or have any interactions with her. And my dad had always had addiction problems. And when you have addiction problems and you go through a crisis, you turn to your addictions. Sure. And so he was kind of, um, he was not in a place where he was a good caregiver at the time, just because his own pain was really severe. So I kind of became the responsible adult in the family. Are you the oldest? I am the oldest. Okay. Yes, I am the oldest. And so it was natural for me to kind of, you know, firstborn's going to take charge anyway. How many siblings? I just have one younger brother. Okay. So it was just the two of us. And so, you know, I took care of me. I took care of him. I would sign parent teacher conference notes for my brother, all of those kinds of things. And so my dad had gone through some difficult times with work and finances And so it wound up being to where the best case scenario for me was to move out of my parents' home before my senior year of high school. Wow. So at 17 years old, I got a full-time job and an apartment and was living on my own trying to finish high school. Wow. Yes. And take care of my brother at the same time who wasn't living with me, but still trying to make sure that he was okay. And it was around this time that my husband and I met, my first husband and I met and started dating. And it was kind of one of those, like, I was alone. 
and over my head and just wanted someone to take care of me. And he volunteered to take care of me. And so it just, you know how you are when you're 16, 17 years old and you meet a guy and you think this is the answer to all Mm -hmm. of my problems. Right. Right. And so I had probably like the biggest decision that I've ever had in my whole entire life at 17, 18 years old. I got a letter letting me know that I had received a full scholarship to my college of my first college of choice Wow, where I wanted to go full scholarship. But then I'm like, I'm 17. I don't have any money. I don't have a family support system. It's it would require me moving. And I'm terrified. I was absolutely terrified of the thought of moving out of the town that I'd spent my whole entire life in going to a college not knowing, okay, but when Christmas break comes, what, where do I live? Am I homeless? You know, like Mm. I don't have anywhere to go when Christmas break comes. I don't have anywhere to go where summer break comes. I can live in the dorm during college, but then what? Mm. And so I'd gone to my, um, boyfriend at the time and explained it to him. And he was also young and not making the best choices, but he was threatened by the idea of me going to college. And it was basically a, well, you can do that if you want, or we can get married and start our lives together. And so as a 17 year old girl, I was like, well, I want a family. I'm tired of not having someone take care of me. Mm. And so I gave up that dream of college to get married. And so 30 days after I graduated from high school, I got married. At the time, I felt like I was making the right choice. But in the back of my mind, there was always this, you're giving up your one opportunity. As someone who lived for school, who loved school, who loved education, it felt like giving up my dreams, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I've had to like allow myself to love that 17 year old me. Mm -hmm. Give that grace. And give her, you know, like she did the best that she could Mm -hmm. at the time. Sure. So you, you enter into marriage, right? You're you're at 18 years old, searching for security. (laughs) Exactly. You think you found it right in your man. Yeah. And so then what? Well, then we, we had babies, you know, we got involved in the church. We made a life together and, you know, it was good and it was hard. Neither one of us kind of had a stable foundation from our families. So it was, you know, difficult, but we were stumbling along and, and trying to find our way. And then, but I always had in the back of my mind, and here's a, here's the weird thing is I was always able to get really good jobs. I always worked places that I loved and got along well with my coworkers and was promoted and appreciated Mm -hmm. at work. Mm -hmm. But every time I would go to apply for a job, I had this, they shouldn't hire me because I never, I don't have a college degree. I'm not worth. Mm. And isn't that what our our culture tells us? Yeah. If you don't have that degree behind your name, then you're a little less than yes. for some reason, which right. has nothing to do with your, your giftings or your, your brain power. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And like, logically, that's one of those things that, you know, mm-hmm. but you know, just being human, you kind of think I'm not as good as right. other people. So yeah, when I decided to go back to college, it was kind of this whole, like I gave up a dream for a boy mm. and I don't know that I have to live with that consequence. You know, you're like, I have a choice. I have a choice. I still have a choice in this. I am not too old to make a different decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. Yeah. And so when I found myself a single mom, kind of looking at my life, it wasn't a, I need, I need a better job so that I can provide for my family. Cause I already had a great job and I was able to provide for my family. It was more of a, I wonder if I could do it. Mm -hmm. Like, do I still have it in me Mm -hmm. to go to college and to, graduate, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and with all the options that are available to single moms, this was a way to spend my time that I thought was probably safe, (laughs) you know, because I was lonely yeah, and feeling rejected Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of those things that you go through when you're a single mom and and everything. And I'm like, no, I want to do something that's just for me. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that's, um, that fills me up, that Mm -hmm. makes me excited. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to go to school and not tell anybody. And so I did. I told my kids and my best friend. Why why was that? Why do you think you kept that to yourself? Was there this like, what if I don't like it? What if I fail? Or were you afraid of judgment from other people? Like, what is she thinking? She's in her 40s. She's going to school. Exactly. No, maybe a little bit of those things. But honestly, I think the reason I kept it really private was selfish. I just wanted something that was just mine Mm. and no one else's, you Mm. know? Yeah. 
And I wasn't doing it to prove something or to accomplish something. I just wanted to do something just for me. Mm -hmm. And after being a mom for, I mean, now, you know, more than 20 years that I've been a mom. And I feel like as women, we feel like we can't do stuff that's just for us. Mm -hmm. It has to be for me and something else. Right. I I think you're right on with that. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like we spend most of our time pouring out. Um, for other people. Mm -hmm. And if we do do something just for us, then we feel like we are being selfish. Right. And when really that's okay. You know, if if the world was all about you, that's different, Mm -hmm. but there is this sense. I don't know if it is, maybe it's just being a woman. Like we feel like if we take time just to do something for us, right. That there's a little guilt there for some reason. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is that? Why right. do I have that? Like, yeah. no, I, if I want to go to the spa today, <laughs> because I haven't been to the spa in 10 years, I can go to the spa and not feel guilty about it and not feel guilty about right. it. Right. Yeah. No, yes. I get it. Yeah. And people don't, you know, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to say I'm going to the spa for me than I'm taking an algebra class for me, you know, <laughs> Which, by the way, algebra was the worst thing. You should never have to take algebra in your 40s. Let's just put that out there. But it was just for me. And I did enjoy it. And I loved going and sitting in a classroom and having intellectual conversations with people and reading books that I wouldn't have read if it hadn't been assigned to me. And when my kids were all gone on a Friday night because they were at the football game at the school and I was home by myself. And it's really tempting to pull up my phone and say, well, I'm just going to create a dating app. It was nice to sit there and and do something for myself that filled me up and made me feel excited about life. Yeah. You know, and so I just kind of wanted to keep that just for me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. This is obviously the brave place, Uh you know, as a single mom, um, to me, there's nothing braver than that. And then also tackling in your forties, going to college And a lot of people, and I love that you shared that because a lot of people think it's too late for me. Yeah. And it really is never too late. It's not. I I can remember even whenever I was in college in my early twenties, I, there was a guy in there, he was in his seventies and he was in our classes and he was going to college. Yeah. I was just always in awe of that guy for that reason. Yeah. And, and so I just think anyone listening, just know whatever God puts in your heart, go for it. It's not too late. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I remember sitting down with one of my girlfriends when I was thinking about going back to school and I just told her, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is absolutely crazy. I'm going to be 47 years old when I graduate, when I finish school. And she just leaned across the table and she looked at me and she goes, honey, you're going to be 47 no matter what. Mm. Do you want to be 47 with a degree or without a degree? So good. And I was like, you know, she's right. Mm -hmm. I can't stop time. Mm -hmm. I can't stop the aging process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be approaching 50 Mm -hmm. no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And so how do I want to spend these years? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if I'm 47 or 57 or 77, Mm -hmm. you know, like if I still have life and energy and a desire to do something, then what's stopping me? Mm -hmm. You know? So where are you right now in the process of your degree? Are I've you- got my undergrad degree is completely finished and I am almost finished with my master's degree and I'm currently starting my internship. The finish line is super close. Man, that's incredible, Carrie. Yeah. So as you've been interning, you're getting to put into practice yeah. um, everything you've been working so hard towards. So what is that like for you? Just putting that into practice? Yeah, it's been really interesting because there's a real there's a difference between theoretical knowledge and actually An application doing something. <laughs> yes. And it's terrifying to think about the two things because I am book smart in quotations um, and everything. And so it's like, OK, can I take this? book knowledge that I've learned and actually put it into practice. One of my best friends is um, my mentor. Her name is Susan. She's also a therapist. And she told me once she said, I never feel the presence of God more than I do when I'm sitting across from a client. Mm. And that is true for me. Mm. I have experienced that, you know, and there have been moments where I have sat in a room with a client and gotten the privilege of hearing part of their story. And the presence of God is so thick Mm. and so real and so tangible. And it's been good to have that just as confirmation Mm. because Mm. 
it's one thing to walk away from a job that you don't love. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to walk away from a job that you love with all of your heart, Mm. you know? Yeah. And with people that you love with all of your heart. And so God has been so sweet to give me moments of confirmation, not just once or twice, but over and over again, confirmation of, no, this is the season that I am calling you to. Mm -hmm. And the only way to enter into this new season is to step out of your current season, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and I want to hold on to both. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right. You want the best of both worlds. Sure. But when you're letting go of something that's really sweet and really precious to you, it's so kind of God to give you those moments of no, but I'm here. That's right. And if you step into this new thing, I'm already waiting here for you. Mm -hmm. I've already prepared you for this, you know, not that it's going to be perfect or easy or any of those things, but, but to know that his presence is already there waiting for me to step into it has been the best gift that he could give me in this season. Mm, That's beautiful. I think it's also a testament to your steadfast walk with the Lord, listening to that inner voice, going back to school, trusting in him through the process. And, and just like you said, like he's showing up, confirming over and over where you are. And that is such a gift. And and that's what brings peace. Yes. Yeah. That peace and that joy, that, that inner stillness, that you're all good. You know, you're in the right place and you can look back on this season at KLRC and say, man, that was such a blessing to my life. It has been such a gift and God's even got another gift waiting Mm -hmm. on me. And that's just what he does. Yeah. 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 And I think the thing that's been really interesting with this transition for me, and you know, we're talking about seasons. I think that it's really taught me how vitally important it is to walk with God. Mm. You know, for sure. That following him requires a daily moment by moment. God, what is the next thing for me? Mm-hmm. You know? And sometimes that looks like letting go of something that doesn't make sense. But we just have to trust him in that, that he's going to lead us to something better. Mm -hmm. This season of surrender has been really, really hard. But I keep coming back to, I want God to have permission of what he takes out of my hands and what he puts in my hands Mm -hmm. without me questioning him. Mm -hmm. I I love that you said that word, surrender. Yeah. Um, I think that is really the key to us transitioning into anything Um, that God has for us. Um, It reminds me, there's this playground image, you know, those rings, you can go from one side to the other Uh side and there's these, this long row of rings and you put one hand on a ring and then you swing to the next one and then swing to the next one. And you cannot get to the next ring unless you let go of the one behind you. And that's what that reminds me of. You can't move forward until you let go. Yeah. And it's terrifying. And surrender. Yeah. Because there's security. Mm -hmm. You know, hundred percent. It's what we know, even if sometimes it's maybe not the best for us, it's still what we know. Yes. And when you know, it feels comfortable, it Mm -hmm. feels safe. Mm -hmm. And it's the unknowing that is scary. And I can just say from my own experience, it's, it is through the just trusting in God, letting go that my faith has been built. Right. And if it wasn't for those moments, I wouldn't have the trust and faith in God that I have today. Yeah. The greater your faith grows, the more your peace mm-hmm. grows. And um, so I, I think it's just, it all works in our favor to make us stronger in so many ways. Yeah. I just really respect just the journey that you've been on and how you have really let go, surrendered to God mm-hmm. and, and help him guide your path. And I do want to talk about hard seasons. When you've been in the hardest season, how have you dealt with that? Yeah. What what would you say is the hardest season or has been the hardest season for you? Uh, <laughs> do you want to go there today? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I feel like there's been these um kind of pivotal, darker seasons in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, high school was one of them. The ending of my marriage was one, even though my marriage was hard, but actually going through a divorce. And that was hard for me because having watched my parents go through a divorce, I had this, I will never go through a divorce. Mm. Um, I am a Christian and 
Christian women do not have to lose their marriages. And no matter what, I am never going to be a divorced woman. And then I was one. Mm. And so there was so much shame that Mm. I felt like I had done something wrong, you know, even though it takes two people to fight for a marriage, you know, and, and everything. And then, you know, this current season that we're going through with my son's health crisis to just watch your child suffer and to not have answers, to not be able to fix things, um, has been really, really hard. But through all of those seasons, there's a verse that I found in scripture that has been really comforting to me. And when I think about doing counseling, when I think about sitting with people in their dark places, this is the verse that I keep coming back to over and over and over again. And it's in Isaiah 45. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. Mm. And the thing that I love about that is it says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Darkness is a treasure. Mm. And we don't think that we think that lights and mountaintops um, and the good places are the treasures of God. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, I have never felt the presence of God. I have never known God like I've known God in dark places Mm -hmm. when you can't see or find your way or figure out what's next to know that you are being held by the God of the universe is profound. Mm -hmm. And so I view darkness itself as a gift from Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And if we can view darkness as a treasure, then we know that we don't have to be afraid of it. You know, that so good. And we might hate it and we might want out really, really, really bad, but the darkness itself is a gift. Mm -hmm. And so when people come to me and they're in a dark place, my, uh, all I can say is God is with you and lean into him, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, he'll bring you out of the cave in due time. It's there where we find him, Mm -hmm. you know, I remember whenever I transitioned into that way of thinking. And it wasn't until I had experienced just really low points in my life, Mm -hmm. um, in addiction, uh, in marriage, um, where I started really understanding how the power of God would shine through in the hardest, darkest places. So now I understand when Paul and his word says, thank you for these trials, Mm -hmm. they're producing perseverance, character, faith, hope, all the things that we want in our life. And now I see the beauty in suffering. And, and then whenever I talk to people, you, anyone I talk to, they will always say it was in the suffering that I experienced God the most. Yeah, That's where my faith was built. That's where I became stronger. And then when new trials come about, you have this, we can do this, God. Yeah, we got this. Exactly. Um, there's just a, a deeper route that begins to take place through the hardest times. Yeah. There's something about when you've found God in darkness that you're not scared of the dark anymore. So if you invite me into your dark place, I can walk into that. You know, I'm not scared to walk into that with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what the church is supposed to look like, isn't it? You know, that's what you've created here at the brave place of, you know, you can bring your dark places and we're going to walk into it together because I've been in the dark too. And so I'm not scared anymore, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I just think it's a beautiful thing when people let us step into the dark with them, realizing that we can bring the light of Christ into whatever dark situation that other people are walking through. Paul says, praise be to the God and father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those Mm -hmm. in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Right. And and that's what you're doing here today. You talk to me on the brave place, you know, and, and for people going through hard times, there's this message that says. I've been through this. God was with me yeah. and he can be there for you too. Exactly. God calls people who have been in dark places to bring light to others who are trapped there. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want, you know, and isn't that what God has called every single one of us to Absolutely. as his children to say the world is dark. Mm-hmm. Sin is dark. Mm-hmm. The suffering that you're walking through is dark, but there is a light in Jesus mm-hmm. that sets us free. Mm-hmm. And makes everything clear, Mm -hmm. you know, and if we don't take that light to people who are lost Mm -hmm. and scared and stuck, Mm -hmm. who's going to? That's right. 
you know? And that's all that God's asking us to do. What dark places have you walked through? Mm -hmm. What gift did you get from God there? Mm -hmm. And how can you shine that light to someone else who's in a dark place right now? Mm -hmm. You know, so good. And and one thing I want to point out before we run out of time too, is it's so important. It was for me anyway, whenever we are going through these dark places to make sure we have someone alongside us too, that's either been before us in the same situation or really can remind us. It's, I, I know like my community, I've, I've got some really tight girls in my life, just deep, beautiful relationship, friendships. And they remind me of who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, they remind me whenever I'm in these emotional states, because whenever you're in an emotional state, you don't think clearly. Right. Um, so it's so important that you have this army around you that is thinking clearly that they are outside of those emotions and they can come in and say, Hey, this is what God says about yeah. you, Christy. Don't forget what his word says about this. This will pass. The storm will not stay here forever. The mm -hmm. sun is going to come out. And I think that's just so important who we surround ourselves with. And, and then also that we face what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes people get confused between coping and healing. Yeah. Um, you can cope through dark times and never receive healing. Yeah. Like you can cope through drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, mm -hmm. whatever. People choose all kinds of coping shopping, mechanisms, food, distraction, shopping, playing food. games on our phone. Yeah. I want to bring it back down to the Christians because we're, you know, yeah, all, as a good Christian why, women, we're not out there like doing drugs and stuff, but we sure are numbing out right. with what we're ordering online or the games we're playing on our phones. That's right. Yeah. So are you coping or are you healing? Are you facing what you're dealing with and getting real with yourself and truly seeking truth mm -hmm. and healing? Or are you coping? And I just challenge anyone listening to take a look at that because if we want to grow and become stronger and move on past the hurt and the pain, it's so important we focus on the healing and not the coping. Yeah. And, um, and that comes from my own personal experience. I know that the longer I stay in coping mode, the longer and harder it is to get out of coping mode. Mm. It's you just keep digging a deeper pit, deeper pit. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you don't even know what's at the bottom of the pit. And you got all this junk coming out of you and you don't even know where it's coming from because you have never faced it or dealt with it. So do yourself a favor, start focusing on the healing aspect mm -hmm. and not just the coping. So that those are my five words. Really, it was 5,000 words of it was a good 5,000 words of wisdom there um, just from my own personal experience. But now here we are. I'm just so honored that I even get to sit here in this place and even talk about what God has done in my life, giving me this opportunity to step in what you have so gracefully and beautifully done as the morning show co-host. And I will start that in January. Carrie, thank you for your words of wisdom today mm -hmm. and letting us um, just hear a little bit more of your journey that I think many people may not have known. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, like I said, I've been a fan of the brave place and I've been a fan of you mm. for years. Mm. Um, and so to be a guest on the brave place is such an honor and I've loved hanging out with you. It's funny because, you know, when you invited me to, to do this podcast with you, it was kind of like, Oh, we can talk about anything. Oh, you know, like yeah, nothing's yeah, off girl. the table at That's the brave right. place. You can go as deep as you want to. And so thank you for, for creating that space mm -hmm. where, um, where people can go as deep as they need to and be mm -hmm. real and be authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am excited for you. I just want to bless you as mm -hmm. you start this new season and you're going to love it and it's going to be awesome. And there's going to be some mornings when your alarm goes off and the last thing you want to do is get out of bed <laughs> Um, but I know that God has equipped you and gifted you mm. for this next season. Mm. And I think it's just going to be a wild, awesome ride. And I'm personally going to be on the front row, your biggest fan cheering you on. So, mm. man, thank you so much. And you are a big, huge reason why I'm even sitting in this chair today to take on this new role. I just thank you for your support mm -hmm. more than you know. Yeah, this is a new adventure for me and I'm so excited about it and to have your blessing and Mark's blessing, the station just behind me and all of this. Uh, I'm just in awe of God 
every time I think about it, yeah. which is like every five minutes. <laughs> like as I've watched this process, um, I keep thinking to myself, this is what the church is supposed to look like. Yeah. Yeah. It's really been such a sweet transition. Yeah. Everybody's on board. We're all in it together. And yeah, wouldn't it be cool if it was like that yeah. all the time for everybody? Right. Like it, the goal it's just a blessing is to share hope with Jesus. Yeah. With as many people as possible. That's right. And however we need to do that, I'm in. Me too. I'm yeah. with you. All right. All right. Well, for those of you listening, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Brave Place. If you have any questions for me, uh, you can always email me at christy at thebraveplace.org. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y at thebraveplace.org. And until next time, have a brave day. Thanks for listening to The Brave Place, part of the KLRC Podcast Network. 